Right, we've um, we tried to do this yesterday for the video, but I'm going to do it today because we messed up the sound. Um, we've been nominated for the Yorkshire Choice Award, um, the most charitable business, which is a massive deal for us. It's going to be a night out at Ellen Road, um, an award ceremony, and we'd really like to win. So what I'm going to ask for you, right, if you've took anything from these videos, if you've enjoyed them, if you gave them the thumbs up, or even if you've left a negative comment, do us a favour, go into the description, there's a link there, and if you could vote for us please, because we'd love to win this award, um, we're all going to get suited and booted and go for a night out, and hopefully we'd then like to end up on stage um, presented with the trophy. So that's Yorkshire Choice Awards, most charitable business for the money we've raised for candle lighters, and the money you guys have raised as well, so it'll be a culmination of everybody's um, work together to win the award. So if you could get to the description, click the link, Click the link and put us a vote in, that would be fantastic. Right, what we're doing here, so we've got the side walls up, we've got the back wall up. What we're going to do now is put the front wall up, which will house the, um, the bifold doors. The steel is over there, I'll explain the steel in a minute. Um, it's uh, 160 by 80 by 5 mil, but I'll explain that in a minute to you. Um, what I'll do now, I'll just explain what they're building here. So, let's get that mic out of the way, and the finger. Right. So that's the front of the building there. Lead's gone. Right, so that's the opening at the front of the building, yeah? So what they're going to create now is this effect. And what will happen then is our steel beam will sit on there and then it will carry the roof timbers above the bifold doors because what we don't want we don't want any downward pressure off the roof from the bifold doors which will stop it from opening so they will have a double timber there single small timber there taller one there and another one there and then that will then carry that steel um, and we'll go talk about the steel now there's your steel um, like i said it's it's 160 by 80 and the maths on this steel works out absolutely brilliantly for the timber sizes we're using but I'll explain that as well. So what we've done there, we've stuffed it with rock wool um, just to try and prevent a little bit of cold bridging but yeah, I'm going to get a bit but it's never been an issue. Um, that comes as a 7.5 length, we normally get it cut in half which will do a 3 metre set of doors, anything bigger than that and you waste it, you're just throwing away that steel. So, But it's worth the money to go down that line. So you can see what they're building there, that's one, one leg. Dave is on with the other one, and then they will sit there and there, and then the steel will sit across the top there. Um, so there's front walls there, I don't know if Jen can see, She's, they've left like um, a space there for the steel to drop in, so we've got the double timbers there, um, and that single one's attached to that double one there. That will carry the weight of the steel. Um, it obviously needs to be dead straight through, so what they've done, they've put a string line on, um, you can see there, they've got two blocks either side of that string line. We've put the frame on, we've put a fix in there, we've fixed this leg, and we know that leg's plumbed because we plumbed it yesterday and put a brace in. Um, so this, they've put screws in now, but this could actually move backwards and forwards. So what they've done then with the line, they've just gone down like that. And make sure that's dead in line with the line. They've done that both sides. Um, that means the bottom of, of the frame is running through, dead straight and true. So when we put this steel on the top now, once they put some braces on there to just to take that out of there they'll put the steel on they'll put a timber there just to stop the steel rolling over um, and then obviously the steel is dead straight as well the bottom is straight the top is straight and then when we fit the doors everything will be true and straight and the way it should be really right so what david's doing there he's putting them on just literally to stop the steel rolling out of the room when we put the steel on under its own weight you know in case we don't yeah. quite have it right um, so we've got a brace on there which is stopping that wall going that way we've got a brace on there which is holding that corner tight so this steel should go on there now and it should run through dead straight and true once they get it in so, somebody get in that corner over there just let David get in first, he's not in. To you, there you go. Right, so if I get up on top of the... I'm talking to the camera here. If I get up on top of there now, that should look dead straight as it's running through because what happens now 
is that steel now is dead in line with the front of that building. Um, and because we straighten the bottom through, that steel is straight and that's running through dead true and straight. So what we'll do now, um, we will tech screw that steel scale, to the timber. Um, and I'll show you why the mathematics on this steel works out exactly right for the timber we're using. Right, so the steel booms in, it's 80 mil. Yeah, when we put a piece of CLS on there, it's exactly, well, it's, there's a mil difference. It's exactly, apart from a mil, the same width as the 120 mil um, header on that wall. So the maths of that works out perfect for that to work there as well. Now, the reason we put this on here, if Jen comes to this side, we're going to put our um, roof timbers on there. Um, and we haven't, obviously, we don't want to be fixing it the steel. So what we'll do, we'll put some joist hangers on upside down and strap it to that timber, which is tech screwed to that steel with these roofing screws. They're a self-drilling screw, so they'll go straight through the wood. John, will you just hold that timber down for me just for that? They'll go straight through the wood. And fasten that to the steel. Um, Jen's been round already, she's stuck some screws through there. So the steel is tech screwed to that header. It's got normal screws in there as well. And then that 4B2 is tech screwed to there. That's tech screwed to there. The roof joist will go on there and that will be upside down joist hanger strapped to that so it's all tied in and obviously the roof walls tied to the floor so it ain't going to go nowhere because wind lift is a big thing and you need to watch out for that. Right, front of building, back of building. Front of building is high, back of building is low. That will give us our pitch on our roof like that. We're using 5x2. Um, what you want to do with your 5x2, I, I know if you've got a span tables it doesn't actually recommend 5x2 for this span but it's more than fine um, we're limited to height and this is the maximum timber we can use so what you need to do is look down your timber see if it's crowned to mean that what you want to do is let's exaggerate it if it's like that to exaggerate it, you want the crown up yeah not down we have we have got our determined overhang at the front so what I'm going to do I'm going to go across and use that to space it out work as way across um, we pass as a joist hanger, please, Brendan. Uh, 400 spacings, not centres, because we want to get maximum use out of our insulation. And as I said before, we are then going to fix to these with an upside down joist hanger. We'll stick down there. We'll stick some twist nails in there. That will be fixed. Our front overhang and our back overhang is already determined. And if you want to know what that is, then buy yourself a build pack because it's all in there. Um, I can only give away too much for free. Right, so we'll start there, we'll work that way. John's going to cut them. As he's doing them, he's also going to cut the off cut and he's going to cut 400 spaces so we can nog in this roof out as well. He's already set his back guide to 400 so he's not having to measure all the time. Um, Jen's going to go at the back, she's going to pin from the underside. Brandon's going to put the joist hangers on the front and then we, once the full roof is on, I'll explain the trimmers to you as well. We're going, Debbie? Yeah. Right. You're fine, John. You're fine. Um, so, showing you the roof detail is probably one of the hardest things to show you. Um, what we may do at some point is get a drone and just let it hover up there while we discuss what's going on. Um, we put the rafters in, the 400 spacings, so we can get maximum use out of the insulation. Brandon's going on with the joystick. What we're going to do now is put the front trim on. Now, we'll put this on now. All Jen's doing, basically, is... She's going to hold it for me. And contrary to what somebody said before, I'm not trying to bend the timber up, up a touch. She's not trying to bend it. She's just trying to lift it up and down so the top of my board is level with the top of my roof joist. And I'm going to go along like that and she's just going to literally push it up and down. You can see there, at that end, she's probably 30 mil higher. 30 mil higher than the rafter at that end there, but we're just trying to get any kind of twist out of this and not actually try to bend it down a bit, Jen. Down, there. So what I'm doing, I'm just using my pencil just to sit on the rafter and she's gonna lift the front trimmer up. Down the touch, there. She's just lifting the front trimmer up so that what'll happen then is it'll be in line and when we board it, it'll be all nice and flat on the top. Um, you can see there now, can you see at Jen's end, Davis? She's about 20 mil low. Maybe even more. Push it up, Jen. There. So she's literally just lifting it up and down to give me what I need. Up a touch. Too much, too much. Down, down, there. It's pretty straightforward, really. We will do exactly the same 
on the back and then I'll show you the side. The side detail is quite important. Um, it's hard to show you, but I will endeavor to show you how that goes on. Um, down the touch. There. Again, using the pass load, it's probably about seven degrees now, eight degrees. It's working fine in this weather. It's just when it starts to freeze. Are you good there, Jen? Yeah. So we'll do, we'll do exactly the same on the back um, and then we'll do the sides, but I'll show you the sides going in as well. Right, so you can clearly see now the gradient of the roof. There's about 75 mil over our roof. Um, what we're gonna do now is, when we plasterboard here, we don't want no plasterboard flapping around there. And you can also, can you see that moving over there? Yeah. yeah. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna tie that in to the wall. So what we will do is I will go up on the roof, Jen will fix through there. I'll make sure that's, that corner there is dead in line with that corner and then I'll fix through there. And that will tie it all in and we'll also have some little noggins that they'll go on the outside of there. I can't show you from here. They'll go on the outside and they'll carry the side trimmer for the roof as well. And that'll mean when we plasterboard up there, we've got something to fix to it and we ain't got no loose flat plasterboards. And what'll happen then is that timber there will be tied in with that wall. We'll put a series of 400 noggins all the way across and we'll do exactly the same on this side then as well. So what will happen then is the full square roof will be tied in with the walls and it becomes really strong after that. Um, but like I said, the 5x2 on a span table, it's, it's quite not, not quite suitable, but we've been doing these for years now. We're, you're building under permitted development when you're building these and you're limited to your heights and with your height you're also limited to the timber sizes that you use as well but it works it works and i've no doubt um that it, it will continue to work anyway right upside down joist hangers they are exactly what it says on the tin they're literally a joist hanger upside down but you can see now how that has strapped that to that timber that timber is tech screwed to that steel that steel is fixed to that wall that wall is fixed to the floor you're never ever going to get an issue with wind lift then as well and what we will do then as well we will we will spike these roof timbers to the back wall um, and what will that will involve is a nail going through, can you see the angle there David? A nail going through that angle, at that angle there, spiking it in, we'll put three on that side, probably two on that side and we'll spike the full lot in, so that means the roof is tied down because wind lift, what happens with wind lift? It'll get it, it'll start flapping it and then it'll rip the lot off as much as you think, well it's heavy because I've listed all that timber around to the back garden myself and it's the right weight in it, wind will rip it clean off when it goes so you, you want to avoid that obviously if you don't want to be sat here with like a conservatory do you? Right, so that's what we're going to do now, we're going to do the sides, I've already put the back and the front trimmer on, we'll put the side trimmer on, David's going to mark up for the noggins, what we're going to do, it's over three metres so he's going to mark a metre in, he's going to put me a line on there, I'll jump up there and I'll put a row of noggins down at a metre there and a row of noggings down that metre there. Like I said, it's quite difficult to show you the roof construction without actually being above the roof, but what we might do, I'll have a chat with John and see if he thinks it'll work. We might just get a drone and drop a drone up there and just let it hover, and I'll be able to show you it a lot clearer that way anyway. So, and don't forget, we've been nominated for Yorkshire Choice Awards for the most charitable business, so if you go into the description, there's a link there. If you go on the link and just give us a vote, that'd be fantastic, because we'd really appreciate that. Thank you. Right, so you can see the 5 by 2 I've put in there, which is fixed to the wall and also fixed sideways through that rafter there. Um, what we're going to do now, we've also got those little noggins along there. So this timber is pre-cut to the same size as these rafters. That will now drop in there. It will get fixed to them and I'll just cut the ends off. And that'll be the side built. And because that now is... Sorry, that now is getting solid there now. When we noggin across there, tie the other side in, it'll complete rig rigidify the roof. Right, so the roof structure is complete now. Um, you can see the rafters, see the lines of noggings, see the trimmers, back trimmers on, front trimmers on, joist hangers. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to go down, I'm going to spike the back in and spike wherever on the front I can get a spike in there, a couple of few nails in there. Um, I'll stop any wind uplift because we've got that field coming over there, like so all that wind's going to come across that field at some point and get the roof of the building so we don't want it ripping off. Um, and then what we're going to do then, we're going to drop them OS3 free roofing boards on. Um, so the roof structure is built now, we're going to clad it with the OSB free roofing boards. Now you can get an 8 before sheet which is not really manageable if there's any kind of wind upon roof. These are 600 by 2.4, they're tongue and groove so they're going to slot together as well. Um, if it was a floor, 400 spacing is too much, yeah, because what's going to happen there, look, we're going to have a joint over there and it's floating, although we are going to glue it with this polyurethane glue and then when we put this board in, 
like such, it will all become one massive sheet. Um, now, they wouldn't recommend that you would stand on that and walk on it, but we regularly do, we walk on it. Um, so, 400 spacing, 18 mil OSB free roofing mod, polyurethane glue, and we're going to nail it this time rather than we screwed the floor. We're going to use these ring cut nails, they're 63 mil. Yeah, ring cut nails, fired out of the IM350 Plus. This is the best pass load. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know what they're doing with this new one, but that, that's the best in my opinion anyway. Um, let's, let's see if they bring out the rechargeable gas and the battery indicator on the back of the thing like I recommended to them, but we'll see. Um, so I put my first one down, make sure it's dead straight on my back. And then what I'm gonna do, like we did with the floor, I'm gonna mark the center of the joist. It's exactly the same as the floor. Um, we put as cut over there, as off cut goes there, and we're gonna work as way along. Um, and it'll become one massive sheet of OSB free roof then. OSB free roofing board is recommended by the manufacturers of the rubber roof, which we'll be using on this build. Um, this build is also gonna have an AstroTurf roof as well. Now, some people don't like it, some people love it. Um, I think it looks nice. John, you're gonna have it on your roof, aren't you? I've got it. Oh, have you got it? Yeah, well, you've got it. Oh yeah, yeah. So John, John's got it on his roof as well. Forgot about that. And I've actually got it on my lawn, but the cats decided to use it as a massive litter tray. So going forward, that wasn't the best idea. But I can't imagine many cats coming up here using it as a litter tray. Anyway, right. So polyurethane glue. I'm gonna nail it. I'm gonna put gloves on because this gets your hands all black and it stains and it's horrible. So, and what I'm gonna do as well, the, the OSB free roofing boards tend to go together better than. Um, the, the chipboard flooring but sometimes you can just push them into place and other times you've got to give them a little tap but you can i don't know if jen can see there yeah. that's closed up beautifully um could you just reach back and pass me that level please and what i'm going to do i'm just going to stick my level on the top of that groove there just to make sure them boards you can't see that jen um can you see no you let me lean over don't just be careful there there so what i'm looking i'm looking that my board runs straight through like that so if you get your first row right and all your rows after that will go lovely and that's what you need to be doing so i'm gonna get a few nails in there just to hold it in place and then i'm free to walk on it there's no risk to me then um, what, what what i will do when we go back, one of the nails hasn't sunk in there. Now, obviously going too fast for Paz Lord, but what we will go, what we, me and Jen will do then, we'll clean the glue off and sand it, ready to take the rubber. Um, again, just free in there. There goes a the pencil. Watch my what? In the glue yeah all right so what james just said to me then is watch my foot in the glue because what happens is you stand in it you see there look one racking after the other yeah no problems um so what we'll do that's the off cut there look brandon's already sent that up to me so what will happen now is that will go in there like so We'll glue that, we'll nail that, and off we'll go again with another row of boards. Brandon's going to cut, I'm gonna, um, Jen's going to nail, um, and then what we'll do, then we'll show you a clean up afterwards. Off, yeah. Right, that's your full roof board, it's OSB free roofing boards, fixed with 63 mil ring cut nails and glued with polyurethane glue. They haven't got the um, five minute glue anymore, which is annoying, but even with the 30 minute glue at this time of year, we started that roof, back of that roof maybe an hour ago, Jen, Jen, Jen. We started that roof maybe an hour ago. Yeah. Um, and the glue hasn't gone off yet, even though you've got the wind coming across that field. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna wait till just before we go home, then we're gonna put some two layers of visqueen over the top of it to keep it dry. And tomorrow morning we'll jump straight on it. But what we'll do tomorrow, we'll go around, we'll scrape the glue off, probably with a multi-tool. And then what we will do then is come and like to that burr there look it's where the nails punctured in and it sent a bit of osb flying up you need to get all that off so what we'll do we'll sand that off we'll make it nice and flat um, and we'll get the glue flat as well and then the little ridges that have appeared in the boards just when they've gone together we'll get rid of them as well and like to this look going around the edge but the circular saws chewed it up um, and we'll make it nice and smooth and then what we will do then um we're going to wait till monday to rubber it um so monday we'll put the fascia and the soffit on We'll go down and talk about that in a minute because we've dropped the roof and I'll explain why. Um, and we're going to AstroTurf it as well, so we'll probably have the AstroTurf here and I'll show you how to cut that. 
I'll show you how to fix it as well. So me and Jen are going to jump down now and we're going to show you the front and show you what's been going on just before we go home. Right, it's going to be clad in high DVL. Um, we're going to double bat on it. You don't actually need to, but we're going to double bat on it to give more airflow. Blah, blah, blah. We marked up where our verticals were. So John's gone round now. He's put these at 400 space in his vertical and he's nailed through. So it's gone through the OSB into the stud work. And what we've done as well, you can just see there, we've increased the height of the fascia. The reason for that is when we work out our hardy VL on our front board, we're left with the tongue. So we're dropping it so we can cut a piece of the tongue off and give a nice finish with the H trim basically. And the reason why we've not put them vertical ones on it's simply because we're going to wait till we've got all our starter trims and we're going to do it in one go. I'll show you what's going on at the front as well. They've done exactly the same on the front there as well. And, when we, and same again, we've not put the second layer on simply because we're going to do it when we do the trims. When the doors are in, we'll get the trims on as well. So if we look inside now, you can see the roof structure. Um, go sit in the corner there, John. James, sit in the corner. Yeah, so you can see the roof structure now. Just give us a minute, Johnny. Just five. Right, can you see the roof? Yeah. Right, so we've got our 5 by 5 by 2 roof. Yeah, we've got our OSB free roofing boards. We've got our row of noggings, upside down joist hangers. We've got the infills there as well to carry the plaster boards. What will happen with them gaps is they will get expanding forming. And on the outside, on the underneath of the soffit, that will get filled with rock wool. Likewise, in that void, that void, that void, that will be filled with rock wool because we can't successfully insulate with PIR insulation. But all the rest here will be PIR'd. It will be a hybrid roof um, and we'll probably maybe discuss that next week. Um, so these props can come out now because as far as I'm concerned, the building's tied together, it's structurally sound, the roof's on, it's a square piece now, the floor's square, the walls are plumb and square and everything's tied in. So they'll come out and it's not going to move. Yeah, right, there's your walls up, your roof on. Um, we're going to get the rubber possibly tomorrow or Monday. Uh, wind's picked up. We've had to put two layers of visqueen on top of that and battened it down because obviously wind's picked up as well. But that'll keep the roof dry or as dry as we hope it will be anyway. Uh, tomorrow we're going to insulate and first fix electrics. Don't forget, um, there'll be a link for the raffle as well. Uh, there's a pod or £20,000 cash up for grabs. And, um, and there'll also be the link to um, for the nomination for the... Um, Yorkshire Choice Awards, which would be really grateful if you could just vote for us on that as well. So please like and subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.